Hey everybody, Andrew here from Go Green Compost, and today I'm going to be making some worm tea. Now, I'm not talking about a beverage for your annelids to enjoy with some scones in the afternoon. No, what I'm talking about is a potent potion of fertility that you can use to boost the biological activity of the soil in your garden. You can also add it to your compost to boost the microbial activity there, and it's going to be a good source of fungi, protozoa, and actinomycetes, the bacteria that break down tough organic matter. So this is basically something that you can add to your garden or your compost heap. It's going to be full of microorganisms, and that's going to make nutrients more bioavailable. It's also going to speed up the decomposition of organic matter. It's going to promote root growth. It's also going to boost your plant's immunity and help them fight off pests and disease. And if you're skeptical about the benefits of worm tea and compost tea, there was a study done at the Organic Agriculture Division of the National Academy of Agricultural Science in Suwon, Korea. And the name of that study is The Effect of Aerated Compost Tea on the Growth of Lettuce, Soybean, and Sweet Corn in Organic Cultivation. Now, that's a pretty interesting study. They basically made a bunch of different types of compost teas, uh, worm tea included, and they measured the biological activity of the tea over time. They covered a couple different methods. So I'll link to that study below if you guys are interested in that. There's a lot of interesting information in there. But the takeaway from the study was that compost tea is really good for your plants. In fact, here's a picture from the study of some soybean plants. And what you're looking at is on the left, those are the plants that were treated with no compost tea. And then as you move to the right, the plants were treated with an increasing concentration of compost tea. And you can see that it definitely had a huge effect on the growth of the vegetative matter and also on the root growth. So compost tea, whether it be just a worm tea or a mixture of compost teas like they used in this study, is a great thing to add to your garden. And if you're already composting with worms, if you're doing some vermicompost, this is a great way to utilize your castings and get a little more bang for your buck with them. And if you're not composting with worms, you guys need to go check out my video on how to make one of these DIY worm composters out of just a couple of five gallon buckets. Those things are super easy to make. You definitely should start worm composting if you're not. And if you do have your vermicomposters already going, it's super easy to make some worm tea. All you're gonna need is a five gallon bucket You'll need one of these fish tank aerators, the kind with the little pumice stone on the end. Now, I picked this up on Amazon years ago. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to pick one of these up. But any fish tank aerator, you can get that at Walmart or your local pet store. As long as it's got the little pumice stone on the end, that's going to be what you need. And then also, you'll need a little bit of molasses. And that's going to basically serve as a substrate for the microorganisms in your tea. So that being said, let's go ahead and harvest some castings from my worm composter here. I've got these buckets going, but they're relatively new. This composter I've been running for years, and the bottom tray uh, I haven't harvested from in over a year, so I'm sure it's ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and pull some castings out of the uh, bottom tray of my worm factory vermicomposter here. So as you guys can see, that's pretty much just a nice, even, uh, humusy black material. This is the ideal type of worm casting you want to harvest to make your worm tea with. And you don't need too much, just a couple of handfuls. So I'm just going to take a couple of handfuls of this, these nice, finished worm castings and put them in this bucket. And you do have to be careful. You don't want to throw any of your worms in there because that's a pretty grisly fate to be drowned in some worm tea. Um, but a couple of handfuls is really all you need. That should be good. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next step. We'll get some water. Okay, so I'm here at my rainwater catchment system, and I'm going to fill up this bucket, not all the way to the brim. I'll probably put about four gallons of water in there. Now, if you don't have rainwater, um, probably well water is going to be your next best option. I would avoid using chlorinated city water if possible, but if that's all you have, don't worry. What you want to do is just take your bucket, fill it up the day before, leave it out in the sun, and ideally, you can use that fish tank bubbler I showed you. You can use that to aerate the water and let it sit around for a little while, and that's going to help remove most of the chlorine and chloramine that might be present in the water. And you really don't want that stuff because chlorine and chloramine are added to city water to kill microorganisms. And the whole point of making worm tea is you're trying to boost the number of microorganisms in the water. Uh, so 
stick with rainwater or well water if possible, but city water can be used. You just gotta try to treat it a little bit to remove some of that chlorine. Okay, so about four gallons of water in there. And I don't really need to mix this up too much because as you can see, the flow of water is pretty strong out of this pipe. So that basically mixed that up for me. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so I've got my castings mixed up into this rainwater here. And now the next thing I am going to do is add the pumice stone for my aerator, which I have plugged in right over here, so it's already running. And I'm just gonna drop that in. And you don't have to have an aerator when you make compost tea. Uh, it does help because really you don't want to be breeding anaerobic bacteria in here. Anaerobic bacteria, the type that doesn't like oxygen, is not particularly good for your garden. It's not a good thing to be breeding. What you want is the aerobic bacteria, the oxygen loving stuff. So using the bubbler just helps to increase the amount of oxygen in your tea and it will help promote the growth of the aerobic bacteria, the good stuff, and it will discourage the growth of the bad anaerobic bacteria. If you don't have a bubbler, I guess you could just stir your tea frequently and that would help aerate it as well. Now, the other thing I have here is a tablespoon of this unsulfured molasses but what i did was i went ahead and dissolved it in some warm water uh, just because if you put a tablespoon of molasses directly into this tea at room temperature it's probably just going to sink to the bottom it doesn't dissolve very readily so what i would do is get a measuring cup or just a container like this with about a cup of water and take your tablespoon of molasses and stir it into that until it's well dissolved and that way when you add it into the tea it's going to uh, just be in solution so I'm gonna go ahead and just dump that in. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm gonna come back in one day and then we'll go ahead and filter this stuff out and I'll show you guys that. Um, but that's pretty much it. This stuff is super easy to make. Let it sit for about 24 hours. If you're in a cooler climate, you might want to let it sit a little bit longer, maybe two days if it's 70 degrees or less. Right now, I'm in North Florida in July, so it's about 80 something degrees out right here in the shade. I wouldn't leave this in the sun. You don't want it to heat up too much because that might kill some of your bacteria. So if you're in a cold place, maybe do put it in the sun. Try to keep the temperature in the 70 to 80 degree range, basically the same temperature you want your worm bin at. So you might decide to uh, brew your tea near your worms, but anyway, Let's go ahead and leave this for a day and then I'll come back and filter it later. Okay guys, so it's been just about 24 hours and my worm tea here is ready to harvest. And at this point, if you wanted to go ahead and just dump this on your plants, that would be fine. I like to dilute it and I'm actually gonna go ahead and filter this so that I can run it through my watering can. So let's go ahead and do that now. So like I said, at this point, this worm tea is ready to go. If you just wanted to pour it at the base of a tree or something along those lines, you're pretty much all set to do so. You might want to go ahead and dilute it half and half with water, but it's not absolutely necessary. Uh, but in my case, I'm going to add this to my garden. So I'm going to want to run it through a watering can. And there are a lot of castings still in there, a lot of solid material from the casting. So I want to filter that out so that it doesn't clog up my watering can. So what I'm going to use is just this filter that I've made from an old t-shirt and it's tied up at the bottom with some cord. And I'm just gonna put this in this five gallon bucket like so. And then I'll go ahead and pour my tea into that filter to get the castings out. And you can see I've even decanted off the liquid and gotten it away from some of these castings, some of the silt and sludge sitting at the bottom of that bucket. And that stuff's really good stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and dump that into my garden as well. And this filter is slow, but it does work. Any cloth filter will do. And then what you want to do with the tea you have is uh, I'm going to add it to my watering can half and half with uh, water from my rain catchment system just to dilute it and get a little bit more bang for my buck with the worm tea. And that's it. And I hope that you guys, if you have some castings and you want to boost the microbial activity in your soil, I hope you'll go ahead and make a batch of compost tea as well. 
and get that added to your garden to help out your plants, help out their immunity, help out their vegetative growth, and help out their root growth, and just have more overall biological activity in your soil. And if you guys want to make some tea, but you don't have a good source of worm castings, then go ahead and check out this video right here so you can learn how you can start making your own worm compost with a super simple, super cheap DIY worm composter. That's pretty much it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. I will catch you next time. Andrew from Go Green Compost out.